On the Mississippi River lies the city of West Wego in Louisiana. On the 22nd of December 1977, in this small southern city, a 250-foot grain elevator exploded. It was heard by people over 10 miles away from the facility. The energy released in this explosion was equivalent to many hundreds, if not thousands of pounds of TNT. Uh, there was fire and smoke coming from the tops of the silos. There was debris everywhere. It was total devastation. Perhaps the only thing more shocking than the scale of the explosion was its cause, grain dust. Any material that can burn will burn rapidly and explosively if it's small enough. Grain produces dust when it's handled. That dust burns so rapidly, it's explosive. The disaster in West Wego was not the first dust explosion at a grain store, but its severity was unmatched and it would serve as a wake-up call for the entire industry. Because of their design, grain elevators are highly susceptible to dust explosions. A grain elevator typically consists of a multitude of buckets connected to a vertical conveyor belt. When a barge is unloaded, the bucket elevator scoops up grain and carries it to the head house. From there it is sorted by grain type and dropped into concrete silos. Grain elevators are designed to move tremendous quantities of grain. When you handle these materials, the generation of dust is inevitable. If you look at the four factors required for a dust explosion, the presence of dust is ever-present. We have enclosure or confinement of the structure itself and oxygen in the air. Therefore, all that's needed is a spark or ignition source to have a dust explosion. In America, 60% of the grain that is exported is carried along the Mississippi River, making West Wego a natural location for a grain store. And in 1977, the West Wego facility was a major local employer. When Mark got the job, you know, he was happy with it because it was so close to home. I never thought it was a dangerous place to work. Before Mark Labiche left for work, he alluded to a potential danger at the facility they were supposed to close the grain elevator down for cleaning and I know because Mark had told me this. On the morning of the 22nd of December, Mark Labiche was working in the head house. An unusual cold front was passing through West Wego, dropping the humidity to a very low level. With static electricity and grain dust in the air, the elements needed for an explosion came together. About 9.15, I heard an explosion and my daughter and I went up to the river road. All we could see was a lot of dust and a lot of concrete all over the place. There were people walk, walking around covered in grain dust. Many of them were, were digging through debris trying to find co-workers and, and things like that. Helicopters were there probably within 30 to 40 minutes after the blast and they were trying to rescue people off the tops of the silos. The radio said it was the river side of the uh, green elevator, and I said, thank God, because Mark's working in the head house. But when we got there, it was the head house that, that blew. Most of the head house was destroyed. Fractured concrete rained down on the grain facility's control room, killing dozens. Among them, Mark Labiche. The shock wave from the first explosion traveled through the facility, causing additional grain dust to become airborne and combust. A number of secondary explosions ignited instantaneously, completely destroying the facility. The explosion in West Wego involved a very large quantity of dust built up in a very large structure. Due to the magnitude of this explosion, the exact cause cannot be pinpointed but is likely a malfunctioning mechanical component on the bucket elevator, such as a failed bearing, or on a ventilation fan in the head house. The resulting mechanical friction could have produced a fatal spark or enough heat to cause the dust to ignite. 36 people died in the accident. It remains the deadliest grain dust explosion on record. In the years to follow the West Wego disaster, the grain elevator industry has taken extensive measures to minimize the potential for grain dust explosions. More recently, in places like Destrehan, Louisiana, 
the Bungie grain elevator utilizes a variety of safety methods found throughout the industry. The uh, incidents of 1977 in the grain industry it was kind of a wake-up call, if you will, for the whole industry to realize that we had to give a renewed focus and much more emphasis on uh, uh, root cause analysis of what causes these type of explosions. One of the critical safety measures implemented by the industry is to closely monitor potential ignition points, primarily the bucket elevator, which is the cause of 40% of all grain dust explosions. If a bearing overheats or the conveyor belt is misaligned, heat sensors located throughout the elevator legs will notify personnel of a potential explosion. We have over 700 of these discrete points that we're actually monitoring the temperature all the time. And that information is uh, conveyed back to the control room that is sensing these temperatures, giving us alarm if it gets to a certain level and can even shut down the equipment automatically if it gets to a higher level. However, if there is an accidental explosion, measures have been taken to contain the blast wave and prevent the often more deadly secondary explosions. Five, four, three, two, one. How it works is that the uh, suppression device actually senses the increase in pressure caused by the early stages of uh, an explosion and would dump a chemical into that uh, bucket elevator casing that would immediately suppress and eliminate the explosion. The chemical agent is dispersed within 80 milliseconds, stopping the explosion in its tracks. Making sure that dust doesn't accumulate around the facility is also vital to minimizing secondary explosions. And as a direct result of the incident in West Wego, grain elevator headhouses are no longer located above offices spreading the facilities out, moving the control rooms to remote locations. All of those came at a cost, efficiency, but was uh, worth it from the safety payback. It's a real success story. We went from a time in a peak year over 60 people were killed in agricultural dust explosions in the late 70s, and a great reduction in risk has been achieved through the engineering evaluation of these types of accidents and taking appropriate steps based on the knowledge learned. And the numbers are improving. From 1976 to 1985, there were 143 deaths as a result of grain dust explosions. From 1986 to 2003, that number had dropped to 33.